Good day, nerds. Welcome to the Multiverse of Entertainment podcast. This is the podcast where we dive into the multiverse of TV and movies and check out the good, the bad, and the damn right ugly from those eras. My name is James. Welcome in and welcome to episode 28. This is a pre recorded episode, so thank you very much. Hope you do appreciate it. By the time you listen to this, I'm on my way back from EGX. Uh, I can't tell you if I've enjoyed it or not because I haven't been there yet as I'm recording this. So, hope you've all had a good week. Thank you for tuning in to listening to episode 27, which was Rush Hour. By the time you've listened to this, uh, by the time you listen to this, that would have been out a week. And uh, that was a really fun episode to do. Um, I haven't really got much to say on this intro, so I just want to get this done because I've got a lot of packing to do. Uh, got to get myself ready to go. I'm literally recording this the day before I go to EGX. So this is on Tuesday the 10th of October. Um, so we're just going to crack on with the show. We're going to be talking about Strike It Lucky uh, for episode 28 today. So this is why the episode the intro is going to sound a little bit weird. But th- this is episode 28. This is probably not the best fucking intro I've ever done. But we're going to talk about um, one of the uh, underrated game shows of the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, We're talking Strike It Lucky with host Michael Barrymore, which debuted on our TV screens on ITV here in the UK on October 29th, 1986. Let's get into the episode. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your host. Oh, that theme song really brings back the Lovely. memories. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, oh, this game game show brings back a lot of memories. Um, I, I used to watch this with uh, my grandparents back in the day and very recently got back into it with um, with a resident uh, that I used to care for. And uh, my God, you, you forget sometimes how good the you know how the game shows were back back in the late 80s early uh, 90s as well especially the 90s um when i grew up we had game shows galore back then you had you know blockbusters strike and lucky uh blankety blank uh big break the generation game christ the generation game who would never forget that um and uh, you know 15 to 1 as well even the daytime shows and count count don't still go into this day um but the thing, the thing was with Strike It Lucky, it was one of those uh, game shows. I didn't really know how the game played. I don't think I paid attention as much as a kid. But once you get into it, you're like, oh yeah, this it's quite an easy game to get through. And it depends as well on how you play it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Strike It Lucky is an, ad- an adapt or UK version of of an american game show called strike it rich and which makes a change because usually what we create over here in the uk the americans keep uh copy us you know um so this is kind of like the first one where we've adapted uh, but i don't know who came first between like uh wheel of fortune um and like family fortunes like for over the uk for over the us family fortunes for us is uh family feud why the change i have no idea um but the premise of strike it lucky was you had a team you had two three teams of two and once you, you know the host and host michael barrymore legend in the business uh once you've done all the intros you've got to know and have a bit of a laugh with the contestants the contestants then go off where one person stays at the podium and the other goes around touching the little buttons on the screen. And you have to go from one side to the... Uh, you have to play uh, horizontally. So you had to press the screen each time as you go. But you couldn't necessarily press the screen willy-nilly. The partner at the podium had to answer several questions. Answer, uh, answer several questions. And the person at the podium had to give 
um a number of answers so they could choose they could choose either have two three or four answers which they had to give and if they got it wrong it would be passed on to the next person and if they got it wrong if they got it wrong it would go to the next person and then so on but if you get the answers right whatever whatever the amount of answers you give uh, or asked to give you will be able to move you will be able to move now and and if the uh if the other if you get it wrong and the other contestant gets it right they get all the moves so it's kind of like it's kind of like a general knowledge thing uh some of the questions can be really funny uh, i think one example that i saw before was uh how many what how many f words in this kind of thing you have to give different answers and they were all clean it was quite funny um so when you get the answers right you move on uh move from square you start from the start which is uh, properly says and then you have to press uh a button on a screen and then the screen would pop up with like a prize something really nice or uh they have something called a hot spot where if you if you get prizes so you've got so say if you've got uh three moves and the first two screens you press are prizes and the third screen is a hot spot you lose them prices so you get an opportunity to either bank the prizes beforehand or you move on so it's kind of like uh <laughs> it's the name of the game strike your luck you can either get all all the all the prizes in those moves or you get nothing basically uh so this would go on until the person goes to the other end at, at get to the end so when you when you get to the last screen it's a question so you can't do anything about it you can't make a move you can't answer regular questions you get a specific question and if you get that right you get through to the bonus round if you don't you move on until basically somebody answers the final question at the end and they win once they do that everyone goes back to where uh to the podium so you say goodbye uh sometimes there are people who don't manage to move from the start which is unfortunate but they give the prize they michael barryman goes up to the screens and then presses a screen to see what prizes they can get some of them are quite funny and some of them are quite retro to the, now these days quite some of them are quite retro considering you've got um like a cd player walk when you get a nice holiday a nice massage you know you do whatever like you know it's really really good um but then they don't allow it to go away empty-handed and also they get like a free board game as well uh which i don't think i ever played the board game i think the only board games from tv shows that i ever played was the blockbuster one big break one and possibly the star trek next generation game i know i had that because i had the little some of these games had like the little uh vhs tape you put in and the person would come up with screen that's pretty cool uh, shout out to whoever remembers them you know um so then after after that comes round, uh the winning couple go on then to the uh jackpot round which they get a choice of what how much prize money they would want to get the top prize would be at that at the time would be five thousand pound three thousand pound and then two thousand pound but uh, I think there was a point there was it was like three thousand, two thousand and one or three thousand pound, two thousand pound, one thousand pound at one point. Um but I strictly remember like the five thousand pound one. And some people would go, Yeah, we'll take the five thousand. However, there's a bit of a catch to this. So whatever amount of money on the jackpot you want to go for, there's a, a number of hot spots you go you will get or are allowed to have. So the for the five thousand you're only allowed two hot spots for the uh for the for the five thousand yeah five thousand was two spot the middle prize would be uh three hot spots the last the fi last prize would be uh four hot spots generally people would choose like the top prize you know you want the top prize then you don't really want to go anything less do you so when some people when people go for yeah we'll go for like the five thousand they go for the five thousand the crowd cheers and then they go off and play and then the screens uh then when they get to the actual game they can play vertically and then and horizontally at the same time so that you get so instead of having one set of screens you get all three sets of screens going up and down left and you can only go from left to right anyway 
So, but if you went for, the, like I said, if you went for the 5,000 and you only had two hot spots, you have to be really careful because if you, if you get those two hot spots, they're freeze. If you get those two hot spots on your way to the end, um, you have to be careful then because if you get another hot spot, you lose, you lose the game basically. Um, but if you get a question in that aspect, you have to answer the question right or you won't get it at all. So there's three elements to the game. You've got green arrows, which is like automatic pass. You got your questions, which you have to get right, or you have the hot spots, and then they would get uh, computer generated uh, random random order. So they would be in little spots, and then they would be covered. You wouldn't know where they gone. Nobody knows. But then this is where what's so beautiful about uh british game shows is the audience participation and the people at home would be participated as well i i know i remember watching uh play your cards right uh with my, with my family on a saturday night and we would all say hi lower da, 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 stick stick you know all that stuff it, it's generally good fun this is what like i think is missing with families these days is that general game we got all this like reality tv stuff which is okay but who who really wants to sit there and watch like i don't know young people on like an island looking for love who gives a fuck you know that's what tinder's for um i'd rather sit home you know watch some watch some like family fortunes or something you know it's actually pretty it's, it's more fun it's funnier you know it's not as depressing but <clears throat> But this is, but like I said, the audience participation is really good. Some, some, um, what is it? Some contestants don't listen to the audience half the time, but then the ones who listen to the audience, uh, are usually the ones that get really, really far. But then towards the end, as they get close to like the jackpot, um, they suddenly stop listening to the audience and they go somewhere else. I remember, uh, a son and a father was very close to getting the jackpot and were listening to the audience all the way through but then they decided not to listen to the audience at, at that point and they completely went the wrong way and you know they got the wrong thing and then they, lo they lost the jackpot but they were able to take home like the uh prizes that they won initially at the start of the game which is pretty good this was really good of them um but yeah, um, I've only ever seen one person or two people win a big £5,000 jackpot. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody else win it. Not that I know of. Um, I don't think so. Do I? Can't remember. I don't know. But yeah, this would go on. Uh, this show was, you know, really popular. The The original show, it, it you know, it lasted 13 seasons, 209 episodes, and it ran from... Uh, twenty the twenty ninth of October, nineteen eighty six to about uh twentieth of August, twenty uh, third of August, nineteen ninety nine, where it was closed down completely. And I think halfway through, they revamped it because what because they had the original show was originally recorded or produced at the Tellington uh, Teddy Ting Studios between nineteen eighty six and nineteen eighty two. Then it went to the famous Pinewood Studios, which we all uh, we all know was famous for like making movies. That's where Star Wars was filmed. Uh, that was from ninety three to ninety four, and then it it got turned off for about two years, and then it was revamped in nineteen ninety six as the original name of the show, Strike It Rich, uh, ho still hosted by Michael Barrymore, uh, and that lasted for three years between nineteen ninety six and then nineteen ninety nine, where it ultimately met its uh end which i didn't know they rebranded it uh strike it strike it rich between 96 and 99 um i don't think i probably wasn't watching it by that time um i was probably watching reruns and then oh i might have seen it I, i'm not too sure i can't remember I, I usually remember a lot of things but that isn't my memory is pretty good with certain things but i guess not that far um but this show is like really really good it, it, it's um 
if, if you have it's on youtube uh check it out on youtube you can find episodes on youtube and it's currently on reruns on challenge tv if you've got like sky customers so you can check them out um i i don't i said it before like with these kind of shows i don't know what, understand why they just don't bring these shows back because you've got a young fa- you got young families who stay there watch you know right sports like on saturday nights uh particularly like six stations but then after the rugby you know you could easily have like a family game show on straight after i know family fortunes is still around and going strong these days um but i'm pretty sure we're, like we've got room for more of these tv shows um i know the companies and i know the productions uh people usually decide what they want on their tvs what they don't want um but i'm sure there's plenty of room for game shows to come back um even i know they did like a thing a number of years ago with alan carr where they brought like he did a show where he brought like certain game shows back from the dead to see if there were any interest people watching it i don't know what happened to that um but hopefully one day by the grace of god uh we can get these shows back what do you think um let me know what your favorite uh you know game show is in the comments and you might get an episode one day we'll find out now um yeah i don't think there's much else i could talk about this show uh yeah i don't think so this is gonna be a short episode i think uh not only because i'm going away but um there's only so much with these game shows you could talk about and i thought this show was kind of like worthy of talking because of how fun and good it is so yeah uh that'll be it so what i'll do i'll leave you with some nice words with uh I'll, I'll leave you with something and then we'll do the outro and we get out of here okay <laughs> that's it everybody that's episode 28 which is strike your lucky of the multiverse of entertainment podcast thank you very much for tuning in uh we'll be back next week with even more movies and tv show antics uh if you want to catch us on any social media right now go check us out at multiverse of entertainment pod on instagram mo podcast on tiktok you can follow me on social media as well it's that nerd james everywhere you can catch me on twitch as well i'll be on there gaming out hanging out come say hello um all the links for the uh podcast and myself will be in the descriptions below uh where you can also find us on spotify google podcast uh amazon uh, amazon music and apple podcast as well and you can check us out on youtube as well go to it's the new james on youtube you can find all the multiverse of entertainment podcast episodes there all 27 all 20 all 28 episodes when this goes out so plenty of you to plenty of things for you to enjoy out there uh next week we'll be back in the world of movies and uh my buddy sassy bear clarence is joining us again and we are going to be talking about the 1997 classic classic featuring uh a young tommy lee jones and a young will smith we are talking about men in black so until then we'll rock up to the big intro the big outro see i always get these fucking things wrong we'll rock out to the big outro music we all love so much see you next week goodbye